We're going to attempt one of the more difficult soldering operations. We're going to solder a little microcontroller onto the pads on the board. This is um, about 50 mil center, so it's not the finest lead pitch we're going to do. We'll do a finer pitch in, a, in, a, in another video, but it is still a difficult, challenging one to solder. In this particular example, the first thing we're going to want to do is identify where is pin 1. And if you look closely, there's a little indicator right over here that says, OK, that's the pin 1. And so we're going to grab our microcontroller. And this is where tweezers are really valuable. Here's our microcontroller. And you'll notice, hey, look, here's a pin 1 indicator right here. And so we're going to align those two together. And here we go. Great. And you notice, you know what? That's a pretty good footprint. Um, let's see if we can gain a little bit of perspective here. I'm going to change our angle. So you can see that, you know, if we're careful, we can get the package and the leads. Um, we can get the leads of the package and the footprint to line up. It's going to be a little bit of a challenge, but we can do that. The goal is going to be, again, liberal use of solder flux, the right temperature soldering iron, and a clean solder tip. We're going to tack down one of the leads, and that's going to hold the part in place, and then it'll be so much easier to get all the others down. And the solder flux is going to help us uh, because that's going to help anchor the part in place. So we grab our solder flux. Remember what we do. Um, here's the Here's the tip. Uh, let's see. Yeah, it's a little damp, but we want it, you know, really damp. So we're going to push down. Don't have to jab it down. Just push down a little bit. All we're doing is getting the reservoir uh, in place. Yeah, it's a lot wetter. So now let's get our part in place. We're going to liberally coat that surface with solder flux so it's really wet. If we need more solder to come out there, Remember, you can never have too much solder flux. So you can see it's pretty damp all along the surface there. Next step is we're going to grab our part. We got it roughly aligned before, and now we're going to rotate it in place. And we want to get it so that it is mostly aligned on the pads. And this is where not having a lot of coffee in the morning helps a lot. So it's aligned. The next step is we're going to clean the tip of the soldering iron with the brass sponge. Here's what that tip looks like. It's a pretty good shape. We're using that 600 degrees. We're going to add a little bit of solder to that tip. And now here comes the tough part. We have to hold the part down, and all we're going to do is tack one lead. And there we go. So we've aligned the part, we've put a lot of solder flux down, and now all we did is let the solder do the work. We uh, put a little solder on the tip, we touched the tip, the solder flowed over that tip. Let's take a, a good look at it. And, well, Maybe you can kind of see there, and again, I apologize, a little hard to see it in detail with the camera, but you can see, hey, we've wet the tip. We can always go back and clean it up a little bit later. Now we've tacked the part down. Now we don't have to hold the part in place. Generally, after we've got one lead down, you go somewhere else, and I'm going to go to another diagonal lead. Again, what's the secret for soldering is you want to have solder flux. And so I'm going to put more solder flux down so I can visibly see the surface is wet. The part's kind of in place there. That's good. Clean off the solder tip. If you don't use your soldering iron for about 10 minutes, there's an auto shut off to um, uh, drop the temperature. And so you can't solder very well if the temperature is too low. So you want to make sure that you just touch one of the buttons and that will um, uh, get the temperature back to the set point. So we clean the tip, we add we add a little bit of solder to it, there it is, and we want to put that solder in contact with the lead 
And so we come over here, we touch the lead, let the solder flux and the solder do the work for you. And that solder just flowed right over the surface. And um, pretty good tip. Let's see if I can get a better image on this. Now, we've got the part soldered down on the board. And I can move it around. It's really robust because I've tacked it on this side and I've tacked it on um, this side over here. Now it's a simple matter of going around with uh, making sure we have a liberal amount of solder flux and going around with the soldering iron and letting the solder do the work. So let's do that really quickly here. So um, look, you can see how wet I've made that part. Got a lot of solder flux down there. And now we're going to take our tip, clean off the tip, and we're going to start at one lead and just walk our way around. And I'm going to add a couple of shorts on purpose. So I am literally just touching the leads. And there we go. Got a lot of solder on there. In fact, you know what? We got too much. We have to clean it off. And so here is how we clean off excess solder shorts. I'm going to show you the secret. We're going to start with the uh, solder wick. Solder wick is nothing more than copper braid. Copper because um, once the oxide is removed, the tin uh, solder will stick to the copper. Uh, and again, we're going to saturate it with um, solder flux so that it acts like a little bit of a sponge or a cloth. It'll just soak up that solder flux. And so here, so you can see the solder flux coming out. We're just going to saturate this with solder flux. It's now wet with solder flux. Our goal is to place it in contact with the part that has the excess solder, heat it up through the solder wick, and let the reflowed solder wet the solder wick, and that hot solder will just be wicked up in the copper foil, leaving behind enough solder to coat the surfaces. And to do that, we have to use a little higher temperature on the soldering iron because we have a lot of copper to heat up. And so if we're using seven, 600 degrees um, Fahrenheit in order to uh, reflow and uh, the solder on the pads and apply solder, something like uh, in the high 600s to 700 degrees is what we want to use in order to soak up the excess solder. And so uh, once again, uh, raise the temperature up. Again, you can't have too much solder flux. I'm going to clean the solder wick. Uh, it also helps if you have a you know controlled tip. And so I've just cleaned the tip. We're going to saturate the solder flux, and then we're going to place it here, and we're going to heat up, and we're going to remove all the excess solder. So we put the wick in contact. We put our hot soldering iron, and you can hear it sizzle, and you can see, look, we're getting solder on that wick. And then, of course, you want to don't solder the wick down to it. You just want to use it to suck up the excess solder. And this is where using a high enough temperature on the soldering iron, we want to reflow the solder underneath, but not, um, not solder the wick to the surface. And you can see we're picking up excess solder. It's working. And again, what's the secret of being able to remove the excess solder? It's having solder flux on the wick. So we're heating up the excess solder. It's wicking out. We'll add some more solder flux. I find it better to add the solder flux to the wick than the solder flux to the board uh, because the wick holds a lot more solder flux than um, uh, you can fit on the board because it's a sponge. I can hear it sizzling. That means it's working, and look at all the solder that we're picking up. And it's just wicking out. Oh my gosh, look at that. Is that beautiful or what? And when you get too much when you get too much solder, so we can see it without the glare. When you get too much solder on the uh, solder wick, hey, it's time to throw it away. You're done. It did its job. It sucked up all that solder. Now let's do a little bit more. Don't have to worry about 
taken too much solder off the leads, you will always have, if you have a good solder joint, you will always have solder uh, left behind between the pad and the leads. And we'll do one more round. Again, keep in mind, clean the leads. You can hear it sizzling. And presto, look, we removed all the solder joints and we left behind really good leads solder to the board. Excellent. Okay, and now I did that kind of on purpose to show you how to remove the uh, excess um, uh, the excess shorts. But now it's a simple matter of same process. We're going to go around, we're going to add solder flux, make sure that our temperature is, we don't want that high temperature. But you know again, start at 600, work your way up from there, maybe 650 will give you a very efficient soldering. And we're going to add a little solder to the tip and just touch lead to lead. And again, don't be afraid. You get a soldered, uh, you get a, a short, we can always fix them later. And I'm doing a terrible job here of adding um, uh, solder shorts behind, but that's okay because I know how to clean them up. And so I'm just making sure that each of the pads uh, and the leads are reflowed to the board. And now I'm going to clean up those solder joints. So how do we do that? We make a little puddle of solder flux. We soak our lead. We soak our solder wick in that. We come along, we make contact, and boy, you can hear it sizzling. That means it's working. And we are coming along and we are just remelting that solder and letting it wick on the copper foil and letting it wick on that copper braid. And if we heat it up, it'll come on up. I'll do some more. And when you can start seeing the solder changing the color of the wick, hey, that means it's working. That means that you're sucking solder up. You can see we're cleaning off those leads. I'm going to clean off the solder wick because uh, we've sucked up too much solder on it. Again, saturate it in solder flux. A high temperature soldering iron works best because that copper has a lot of thermal mass. We need to heat it up. And so about 700 degrees in the soldering iron clean tip is what's going to help to suck up all the excess solder. And look, there we go, sucking up the solder. If you don't hear the sizzling, probably means you need to add some more solder flux. And you can almost see the solder flowing on those leads. Now I'm not doing the best job in the world at this and I apologize and part of the problem is that I'm at an awkward angle because the camera is over the part. But you know, if you're doing this and uh, maybe you'll have a little better angle. If you have a microscope, that's really the best way of all of doing it. Um, and then you can see the details. But even without that, uh, it's easy to see when you have a short. And there we go. Boy, you know what? I did a pretty good job of cleaning up uh, the solder flux, the 
excess solder shorts and now we can literally go around and tack each of the other leads. Now it also helps if you have a smaller tip soldering iron. I've got a large tip here and that is very prone to shorts. If you have a smaller tip then you can literally touch lead at a time and literally walk along the leads and make uh, individual contact. Again, let the, the solder and the solder flux do the work for you.